Hello. Unlike a lot of people that talk about the Raptors, a lot of people on YouTube that like to yell and scream, and that's why people watch them. Because they yell, and they scream, and they jump, and they dance, and they break things, and they throw things. That is not my style. Indeed, as of late, the shine has come off the apple of the Toronto Raptors. Now, mind you, like any sport where there are playoffs, the regular season is rather irrelevant. As long as you make the playoffs, that is when you need the team to come together and gel and find ways to win. And of course, right now, the Raptors are not finding ways to win. Um, they were infected by COVID-19, which of course many teams have gone through this, um, but it hit us particularly hard with coaches, players, all kinds of people, whether not infected but affected, and of course the team suffered. Mind you, right now, when we look back to the championship year, the glory year, in the final game, eight players took to the floor, and four of them are gone. So, you know, it's not the same team as what it once was. And, um, you know, I know everybody is trying their hardest, but right now, either stamina is running out, or something is just not clicking, whereas we, kind of like a runner in a marathon, the finishing kick is gone. We hold our own, we do pretty well, and then as the finish line is in sight, it's just not happening. And, um, you know, I'm not an NBA coach. I'm not. But one thing I have noticed is, and I may be wrong, but I mean, um, unfortunately, Pascal Siakam is not the person to have with the ball in his hand, with the clock winding down, no time left, and the game on the line. Um, it, he's just not. It's not. Nothing against him. He's just not the one. Or as far as I can remember, and I may not have watched every single game, but three games this year, we could have had or at least gone, continued on into overtime, had he made his shots. Now, it's a team game. There's no I in team. It's not all his fault. Really, if we were winning every quarter by five points, at the end of the game, we would win by 20, and then we wouldn't get into these situations. But that's not happening. So, as much as I think Pascal is a very talented player, there are times when he is not the man, and he should not be the one. He should be inbounding to somebody not receiving, or he should be on the bench with somebody else there. There are many people on the team that are, would not be the one to do that last second shot. And of course, it's up to the coaches to figure out who the one person is. Um, who is my money on? I would say to drain a last second three, I would have more faith in Kyle Lowry and Fred um, than anybody else. Now, does that mean they're going to make it? No, it doesn't. But Pascal, in th three games that I can remember, has shown clearly he is not the one. He just isn't. But other times in the game, he is the one. He is the man. He does incredible things. He spins, he twirls, he dances. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Anyway, at this moment, after going into Houston, a team that had not won in 20 games and losing to them, certainly there's got to be a whole lot of reflecting going on. But remember, again, all they have to do is make the playoffs now. 
p playoff positioning is important because if we end up playing the bestest team, we may not survive that. But still, right now, people may be weakened, they may be tired, um, there may be all kinds of things going on. We just have to look at the games ahead, look at the math, make the playoffs, and then that is the time to gel. And everything has to come together then. Right now, I suspect there's a lot of, not a lot, but there's probably some bickering going on. Because, you know, when a team is winning, it's all fun, it's all great, it's all dandy, even if you're not playing. Um, and right now, they're not winning. They now have the longest losing streak in the league, which is nowhere near as long as the losing streak that Houston had. Which, of course, Houston got out of their 20-game losing streak by beating us. Anyway, there is still hope, there is still time, and I'm hoping that they can pull it off, make the playoffs, and then solidify, come together, and um, as the tra trade deadline approaches, there's, of course, always the questions about, well, if we don't trade them, we don't get anything for them. But, you know, part of, I think, what really went bad here is they had this grand plan of stealing the league MVP from the Bucks, And they weren't quiet about this. Like, there was speculation about this for a long time. So, of course, what did the Bucks do? They signed him to an extension. So, unless they make some big trade, he's not coming. But in the midst of that, two big men that we had have since left us. Maybe they were irked and saying, oh, well, I see, the writing's on the wall. You're going to get the league MVP. So why am I needed here? I don't know. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but he's not coming. So now we're down to, you know, do we trade so we get something for them? Um, and I don't know. I just don't know. But I would like to think that instead of opting for that, that they call them in and say, okay, let's make a deal. Because I think the two who are most likely right now being looked at as possible trades, like basically if, if the Raptors end up being sellers and other teams are buyers, um, Kyle Lowry and Norman Powell. And I really think they should sit down with them and their representatives and their agents and their wives and their people and stuff and say, yo, Stay, stay here, and make them a deal. And I suspect they would stay. Um, maybe not, you know. I mean, it have it have to it has to be a fair deal. And will it cost money? Yes, yes, it will. But, you know, I'm thinking back to what happened with the Blue Jays when their new management came in. And basically, you know, people just sort of drifted away and were traded away. And like the last game that our former manager might have managed, he wasn't even there. And he, he, oh yeah, I'm out of here. You know, it, it, it wasn't a classy way that the Blue Jays of 2015 were slowly disbanded and dismembered. And I would like to think that the Raptors have class. And they will do the right thing and at least offer our key players an enticing deal that would keep them here. And if they refuse, they can say, hey, you know, we tried, we offered. 
Anyway, above all, right at this moment, we need a win. We do. Something to get momentum going in the other direction. Because right now the pity party is really taking over. And, uh, you know, there's rumors of fines because uh, people didn't say, you know what? I've worked in organizations where, unfortunately, sometimes you have management who appreciate somebody coming forward and saying, hello, something is wrong here, we could do this better. And then you have people, and, and they say, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they may not do it exactly, but they at least, they appreciate somebody who has the courage to say, this could maybe be better this way. It doesn't mean they're going to do it, but they, they will at least consider it. Um, whereas there are some management people who, if anybody says anything except you are wonderful, you are wonderful, that they are a threat and they must be eliminated like on Survivor and voted off the island. Which is too bad because of course they all say, oh yes, I have an open door policy. Do come anytime. But if you come anytime, they'll get you. That is not the way it should be. I would like to think that the Raptors are a class act and they can do it right, and they can right the ship, and uh, even, if, even if they just squeak into the playoffs, it doesn't matter. Because if, you know what, if they can't beat the best team in the first round, if that's who we end up playing, or the sorry, the team with the best record, because of course everybody knows the Raptors are the best team, we're just not performing right now. But if we cannot beat a good team with the, the played well through the season in the playoffs in the first round, we're not going to beat them in the last round. So, it is time to turn the temperature down, calm down, calm down, and let the boys play. And let them have fun. Like, it doesn't look like they're having much fun out there right now. And, uh, Funny. My daughter lives in Houston. I sent her a message the other night and said, your, your atrocious team is beating our struggling team. And they did. Anyway, we'll see. We will see. Anyway, no yelling, no screaming, no dancing, no spitting, no breaking things. It's just me. And, oh yes, my son and I, um, we watch the Blue Jays, the Raptors, and the Leafs. At the moment, we do tend to have more Maple Leaf paraphernalia, um, but we're working on it. We're working on it. Anyway, I hope they win the next game. I hope we can get some momentum going. And, uh. I hope the the rumors of fines and bickering and yelling and screaming are put to bed and we can stay away from the evil virus and uh, win some games. That would be nice. Bye for now.